everybody, welcome back to the Economic Analyst channel. In this video, to start off the new year, I'm going to go over a very reliable indicator of economic recessions that is used by finance, investing, and economic officials, and that's called the yield curve. In the yield curve, uh, typically what economists will do is compare the interest rates on a medium to long-term government bond. Typically speaking, the 10-year treasury uh, yield is used. And then they subtract from that 10-year long uh, government bond a short-term government bond. And it's either a two-year treasury, a one-year treasury, or even something shorter than that. But typically, the two-year is used. And anyway, long story short, when the two-year treasury rate is higher than the 10-year treasury rate, it tends to indicate an economic recession. And I'm about to go into some of the thought patterns on why that tends to be a, a, um, a cyclical phenomena observed inside the United States and uh, what that can mean on how high could interest rates uh, need to be risen, raised on the short uh, end to signal a crash in the economy um, compared to long-term interest rates as they stand right now. So first off, this chart right here is I'm going to dispel the illusion here that um, uh, one, or rather, let me back up one second. Uh, one of the pervading think thinkings that's going on about this is that somehow investors in long-term government bonds and 10-year government bonds get this magic knowledge that the economy is going to collapse. So they're, they're paying attention to the economy, and uh, what they'll do is drive the 10-year and the 30-year treasury rate down low, and it falls below the short-term interest rates of the short-term government bonds. But for some reason, they don't buy the short-term government bonds. They're buying the 10-year and 30-year treasury bonds because they want that security and they are divesting out of the stock market because they sense that there's an economic collapse coming. But that's a feed that that's circular logic and it's flawed. And the reason why it's flawed is because if the investors that are buying in these 30-year and 10-year treasury bonds somehow know that the economy is going to collapse, the question becomes what are they looking at inside of economic data or market data that tells them that there's an economic collapse coming. In other words, the yield curve, that is when the yield curve goes negative or when short-term interest rates are raised above long-term interest rates or long-term interest rates fall below short-term interest rates, that can no longer be an indicator of an economic recession because it's no longer an indicator or predictor of an economic recession. It's a symptom of the economic recession occurring. Something else is going on in the economy that is triggering these investors to fly to those 30-year government bonds that then causes the collapse. But yet nobody can figure out, or at least no, no major market heads and pundits are able to figure out what's causing these investors to fly to those government bonds. What I think is going on is something different. I think it's not a case of the long-term interest rates being raised below the short-term interest rates. It's a case of the short-term interest rates being raised above the long-term interest rates. So here in red is the 10-year government bond and in blue is the federal funds rate. And so here what I can confidently say is that this is no longer a sign that you know investors are just getting this, this knowledge at one time and flocking to government bonds on the longer end and the, you know that signals that there's an economic recession. What it is is that the yield curve, this negative yield curve return where short-term interest rates are above long-term interest rates is a phenomena of the Federal Reserve intervening in the economy. So essentially the Fed will buy and sell short-term securities to influence short-term interest rates or control short-term interest rates and therefore influence long-term interest rates. And by doing so, uh, when they start selling securities, when they start raising those short-term interest rates, it has often been seen that when those short-term interest rates raise above the long-term interest rates, just like what we've seen in 1969, what we saw in 1973, what we've seen in 1979 and in 81, and then again in 1989, and then again in 2000, and then again in 2007, and even in July of 2019, shortly before we went through a, a mini repo crisis and then the COVID pandemic, uh, 
Every single time it has been caused by the Federal Reserve raising interest rates because you can see how the Fed will lower interest rates just like they did in the 60s to stimulate economic growth. And when they raise those interest rates later on in the cycle, it crashes the economy. And you can see that cycle build each and every single time. The Fed will raise interest rates on the short end, crashes the economy, they lower interest rates to stimulate growth, then they have to raise interest rates again for one thing or another, crashes the economy. And even when the cycle is showing uh, deteriorating or dropping interest rates, it's still the same cycle. The Fed will lower interest rates to stimulate growth, then when they hike, there's a crash in the economy. The yield curve is a signal that the Fed has raised short-term interest rates too much and now we, we get to that point of why. So here it becomes abundantly clear in this chart where I've combined the two charts here, or two graphs here into one, and you can see the negative yield curve. So you take the 10-year treasury you, uh, interest rate yield and you subtract it from the federal funds rate. And every time that this yield rate goes negative, every time that happens, we get an economic recession at least observed inside the United States within a couple years. Now there are a couple occasions where it might go negative very, very shortly and then, and then uh, recover and the economy doesn't go into a recession. But more often than not, when we get that negative yield curve for a sustained period of time, the U.S. economy goes into recession. Now why? Well, as I mentioned before and alluded to before, it is a so signal that the Fed has raised interest rates too high, but why is it this magic line that when the federal funds rate is raised above the 10-year treasury rate, that somehow that is like, okay, the Fed's raised rates too high on the short end, time to crash the markets. Well, a common thinking is, and, and uh, I think there's a lot of truth to this, is that banks borrow on short-term interest rates and then lend on long-term interest rates and make the profit off the difference between long-term interest rates and short-terms. But what happens when your short-term interest rates are more expensive in cost than your long-term interest rates? Well, in that case, then banks actually uh, lose money. And when they lose money, they turn off the credit valve. They say, wait a second, if we start making all these loans, that are going on, we're going to lose money, let's shut off the loan machine. And because of that, the market is cut off from, it, from uh, credit entering the system because essentially what it wants to do is build up savings, at least on the short end, to lower those short-term interest rates. And by doing so, by trying to build up those savings, it actually cuts short that debt creation which has been keeping the economy going and therefore, it causes a collapse of the house of cards. Now, that, that is a story or explanation to try to explain the data. It is by no means a, a complete or sound economic theory, but it sort of makes sense. And, it, you know, if true, or at least partially true, it raises questions as to what role the Federal Reserve should play in our economic markets. Does it really stimulate growth? Or is it just faking the markets out by making short-term debt artificially cheap? Then when it tries to raise that debt, it actually makes it too expensive in the short run and collapses the entire market. Who knows? But regardless of whether you, you know, buy into that argument or theory, you can't deny that the, you know, the record of negative interest rates holds, or uh, the yield curve and the, the negative yield curve holds true that it is a pretty good indicator of an economic recession inside the U.S. Therefore, now we, we get to the point of, all right, well, if the federal funds rate is between 0 and 0.25%, and the current federal funds rate is indeed, um, it is indeed uh, about 0.13%, and I'll go into this and get it to her. It's 0 0.08 right now, so it's just a little bit on the low side. How high does the uh, interest rates need to go on the federal funds rate to signal a collapse in the market as of now? The 10-year treasury is pointing to about 1.5%. So whereas in a previous video, I made you know a chart showing that, um, okay, well, based off the debt in the system and its correlation with interest rates, the GDP and and uh, defaults and delinquencies on loans, it looks like we can't really sustain anything more than 
a three quarter point Fed hike to 0.75 to 1%. We go above that, we're in trouble. If we go up to 1.25, we're done. Um, instead, what this seems to point is says, well, maybe the US economy can sustain a little bit more, really up to about one and a half percent. And in reality, in, in actuality, when the Fed does start to raise interest rates, it will raise interest rates on that long end. And should it raise interest rates on that long end as well, it just doesn't raise it as much on the short end, it will probably signal that the federal funds could, could uh, go higher. Now, does this mean that um, I'm coming off of my prediction that if we go up to one and a quarter percent federal funds rate, uh, there's going to be an economic crash? No. What this is telling us is that we're seeing a divergence between what my model was showing for the last four or five recessions and what the yield curve is demonstrating right now. Now, it could be that the yield curve is going to be right in the end and my model's wrong, or it could be that both my model and the yield curve are right. And what we will see is something that we saw in 2019 where we see an actual drop in middle and long-term interest rates for whatever reason, signaling a negative yield curve, which then signals an economic recession. Or it could be an interesting situation where the yield curve is actually going to be wrong. Whereas before it served as an interesting indicator that the Fed had raised rates too much in that period of time, it does not necessarily create the, the marginal calculation that says, okay, wherever this 10-year treasury is, is where the federal funds rate needs to be below. And if, if the U.S. Tre uh, federal Reserve were to raise the federal funds rate above wherever this 10-year treasury is, we're going to have a collapse in the markets. Instead, what has been served as a nice, reliable indicator is not the ultimate indicator. It is not the measuring stick of whether the economy expands or not. And therefore, what we could get is a tightening in the yield curve, but not necessarily it going negative. So what we will see is where the spread, the difference between the 10-year treasury and the federal funds might start to tighten as we get into 2022 and in 2023. But it may not actually go negative like it did in the spring summer of 2019 or like it did in early uh, middle 2006 to 2007. What instead may happen is that we may get a lowering or tightening of this yield curve, maybe gets down to 0.5 or 0.2% or 0.7%. But in any case, either way, it's not the ultimate indicator. It's just something that we've noticed as a rule of thumb trend that says, wait a second, if the federal funds rate has been raised above that 10-year treasury, it's too much for the U.S. economy to handle. Short-term debt is way too expensive for banks to continue operations. They have to discontinue those operations, and therefore that's going to lead to a rise in credit default as companies are cut short from new loans being entered out and loaned out into the economy. Guys, that's what I have for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you like my content, make sure you click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Click that notification bell. You'll be notified of any kind of uh, new videos that I do upload. I'll be making more as the days go on. There's a lot to cover here of different topics. But I thought I'd open up the new year talking about this yield curve and its reliability at predicting economic recessions in the U.S. economy. Once again, guys, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.